Hello, welcome back to another LightBurn tutorial. So today I'm just going to go over a few things that I've found out using this software on positioning objects in relation to other objects. When you have to get something that lines up just right or in a specific place, it's kind of hard to do. And right here, this XY position is your key to finding out a lot of this stuff. So I had to, one time I had to draw a trapezium, I guess it's what it's called. And I'll show you real quick what it basically what it looks like. So first I need to take this and I need to move the points in where it's shorter across the top. And I need it to do it equally. So I thought, well, I'll just come in here and do the node selections. And node selections will not work. This is another little tip here. If you want to add nodes on a shape that you drew with one of the shape tools, you have to convert it to a path first. So just and if you try and do it there, I'm right clicking, nothing's happening. You got to drag and select it. Sorry. Get back to your pointer tool. Once it's selected like this, you could right click and just convert it to a path. And then you can come back over here to your node editing and your nodes show up. So what I'm kind of looking for is basically like this and this. That's what I was trying to create. But I need this thing to be the exact same angles, exact same dimensions, everything needs to be perfect. And I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I'm going to start over real quick. Let's delete that off. So here's what I ended up doing. So I drew a square again. And my square needed to be up here. So I've got this highlighted still. My width, it needed to be 3 inches wide. So type 3 and enter. Make sure it's unlocked if you want to make a specific size or it'll change both dimensions. And 3.25 on my height. Okay, so, but I need this top piece right here to just be 2.5 inches. So let's go back to what I said before. We're going to highlight it. We're going to convert it to a path. And we come up on the nodes, but I don't know how far to move these things in. The only way I can move a node, I've tried every which way just to, to move a particular node. And the only way I can do it is you just have to just drag it. And you can't drag it and make it perfect. So here's what I ended up doing. So I said, well, I'll draw another square. Doesn't matter how tall it is, but make it two and a half inches wide. And so if I take that and get it centered right here, then I can just drag my points in to meet the edges of that. But the problem is getting it perfect lined up. Now you can, this I use this for a lot of stuff. I'll come in here and you highlight your object and move to page center. Then I'll highlight this one and move to page center. So I know they're lined up this way, just perfect. But the problem is getting it up where it's where I know that it's right on that line right there. And you see right there, it looks close, but it's not perfect. So I'm going to show you how to use your XYs. Let's go ahead and just scoot that up a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it in page center because as long as I don't arrow it over or drag it sideways, I know it's centered. All I really need to do is get this line and this line in the exact same spot. So I'll show you an easy way to do that using these XY y positions. So highlight your big box and come up here. If you see as I move it up and down, the Y position changes. Okay, and just to make it easy, let's go ahead and just change our Y position to an even number. We'll change it. I, I, I got to go back a little bit. I need to line up this line and this line. And right here, that's our datum where it shows where you're picking from. So right now, we've got a measurement on this line right here at the top. You could use any corner or whatever. It doesn't matter as long as it's on the top. So that's where our Y position is. So let's just change that to an even number. Let's just change it to 9. Okay, so what we got to do now, we still have not moved these side to side, so all we're really doing is going up and down with it. So this one right here, we want this bar right here to line up with here. So we need to just take this one, highlight it, click the down on the bottom button. So now we're measuring our Y position for right here and just change that to 9. And now we are exactly on that. So if we want to go ahead and go and figure out now the other thing we need to do, so what I was going to do now is I just I have a reference point to snap 
and you got to make sure your snaps are turned on. So if we turn that on, when we hit select, we got to select both of these. But we have no nodes on this top box up here when we click node editor. So we need to do the same thing with this top one. So go back to your selection tool, highlight just this box, convert it to a path. Now highlight both boxes and do node editing. And now we've got another node right here. So all we have to do is just get the little cursor where you get these little crosshairs. Let me get it really big where you can see it good. See, I get those little crosshairs. So that's on that node and that node will go everywhere. But when I get it right here and the crosshairs light up and then release it, I've snapped exactly on that point. So let's go back over to our other side and do the same thing. So you get the crosshairs on that node. It doesn't matter how you drag it as long as you get it right there where those crosshairs light up. Well, it didn't do it that time. It's going to make a fool out of me. Let me edit undo that. And let's edit, edit undo that other one. I was trying to be fancy and it didn't work. See right there where it lights up? Now it snapped to that one too. So now we know that our top bar is two and a half inches and it's equal distances from, from here to here all the way around. So all we have to do now, and all this box was was just for design and layout purposes. So we unhighlight everything, highlight that box, hit the delete button, and there we have our trapezium as they call it. And that's all just using that XY position. It's very, very handy. So I'm going to pull up another sheet real quick uh, where I've already got some stuff drawn in and show you one or two more uses for this. Okay, so this is this was going to be a, a leather strap that I was going to cut out on my laser. And I needed these holes to be one inch off of the end. This is a little bit different, but this is just an example. So I need these holes to be one inch off of this end centered on both sides. So how do you do that? So kind of doing the same thing. If you take this, take your, your bar here and you highlight it and you come back up to this move tool and we're just going to move it all the way to the left. And we got right here, we got all of our positions. You know, if this thing's highlighted and you click this little dotted line, it'll zoom you in to where your highlighted thing is. But we need to undo that because we need to highlight this one too. Let's bring our circle with us. We'll highlight both of them. And we'll go ahead and just hit move to the left. And we'll zoom in on that so we can see what we're doing. So... We want to do the same thing. We need, now that we have this all the way to the left, if you come over here and you click the left datum position, so that shows us right here, X position is at zero. It's right on the edge of our work surface. So that we know that's at zero. Our circle here is a quarter inch circle. So we want the center of the circle to be one inch from here. So one inch from there to there is going to be to the center, right? So what we want to do is, oh, you know what? Let's do something else. Let's go back. Let's highlight both of these because you can do it through calculations and all that, but this is a little bit easier to do. So let's move our bar back to page center and we'll move our circle back to page center. So we know this thing's centered in the middle of our uh, leather strip. It's just not positioned at one inch from the end. So now we want to take both of these, go ahead and highlight both of them, and now just move them to the left. And we zoom back in on it. Okay, so now we know, long we just don't mess with our Y position at all, and this thing will stay centered up and down. So we know we're at zero on just our bar. We're at zero. It says minus zero. I don't know why it says that. I guess minus zero is the same as zero. It said zero before, I think. So anyway, so we know this is all the way to here. So we want this thing to be one inch from here to the center of our circle. So what we're going to do is we highlight our circle again. We pick the center point. That's going to be the middle of our circle. We change the, y, or the X position to one. 
and then let's do a measure and see. From there, if you when you're measuring a circle, if you get in the middle, it'll measure from the center of the circle. From there to there is one inch. See right there, I can't show you with my mouse, but right here, it'll say one inch. I'll do it one more time just to show you. So we're exactly one inch. And we know that we're centered top to bottom too. We can even check that if we want to. We're at 0 0.4728, 0 0.4729, and that's just my mouth. There it is, 0 0.4728. So that works. So if we want to do the same thing, so now we can take both of these, group them together, move them back to the center. We could have done our other circle there too, but we'd have lost our one circle. Take this circle, move it to page center, so now we got it centered there, and then highlight all of these because we don't want to lose this position, so make sure you group that in when you're moving it. And then we want to go all the way and move to page right. And we'll zoom in on that, and then we just take, so now we want to just highlight this bar and see what our, uh, our X position is 13, I'm going to write this down so I don't mess it up, 13.8. Five six five. So we want to take highlight just our circle. We're already in the center there. Oh, I'm sorry. That's why I had a bad dimension. You got to remember to check your dimensions on that you have your datum in the right position. So we want to be check our, where our datum position is on the uh, bar. You got to make sure you click the one to the right now since we're the right of the work surface. So we're at sixteen point four one seven. 16.1417. So now we come back, highlight our circle, and we want to go to, now make sure we go back here, change this to the center of the circle, and we want to change that to, we want to go to 15, just take one inch off, 0.1417. Uh, that always does that to me. 15.1417. So we take that and then just hit enter. We get our measuring tool back out from the center to the end. We're at one inch. Okay. And that, that sounds like a lot of work, but I haven't really found another good way of doing it. So when you're laying out projects, it's a good, easy way to use this. And I'm going to show you one more example. Uh, I hope you're still watching, but I'll show you one more example. This is one that drove me crazy how to figure it out, but I'll go ahead and uh, bring it up on the screen, and then I'll show you it was a really useful application for this. Okay, so this was a, it's basically, it's a design I've worked on for a card wallet. And this is the outer dimensions of the leather, and then these are going to be uh, lace holes that I'll laser in. But what I need is I need another version of this, that's going to be basically, this thing is three and a half inches tall. I need one that's three inches tall, looks just like it. And so I came up with a couple different things to do it other than completely redesigning it. Even just redesigning it wouldn't necessarily work because the lace holes have to be perfect with each other. So I'm going to duplicate this, just use the arrows, bring it down, and I'm going to show you what happens. So if I just take this thing, while it's all highlighted, and change the dimensions, to three inches, at least, oh, I'm sorry, let me undo that. I'm going to unlock my height and width and change that to three inches. So it's still the same width, but now it's shorter. So let's change this uh, to another color that'll show up good. Yeah, let's change it to that color right there. So if we bring this thing back up, Let's uh, let's do this. Let's do what we did before. We are at six point one two four six point one two four zero. So let's change this one 
still got the bottom selected. Change it to 6.1240. Enter. Why didn't that work? Oh, 6.1240. Enter. So now that thing is exactly on top of it. And you can see the lines line up perfect, but the circles do not. So that's going to mess me up on my laces because it adjusted the height and everything all around on the whole thing. So that does not work to do that. So what we can do, we're going to take this one, go ahead and delete it out. Oh, I didn't delete everything. Let's undo that. Let's just undo our move. That'll make it easier. And we got that one selected, delete it off. So what we want to do is we want to, first of all, we want to just copy just this outside layer. And see what happened right there? I don't know whether you notice that or not. This is something I always try not to do. Clicking on something to highlight it. Because if you go up here and look to edit undo, undo move selection. When I did that, I actually moved that thing. That's a, a big thing with me. I, I do it all the time, and I try not to do it because I know that happens. And sometimes you don't notice it, and it gets everything out of alignment. So I always drag, or try to drag and highlight instead of clicking on something, because sometimes you'll move it such a minuscule amount that you don't even notice it. So let's right-click. We'll duplicate. We'll just bring it straight down so we'll still be in alignment here. And then... We are going to copy just that. Okay, so we're going to duplicate that. We duplicated it. Just use our arrows and bring it back down. Let's highlight all this, bring it down a little bit, just to give us a little bit of space. So this one, let's highlight that one. This was the one we need to change to three inches now. So make sure that's unlocked. We change that to three inches. So now we got a three inch pocket. Okay, so now we've got our short pocket here and we just have to figure out how to get this lined up with this where it's a tenth of an inch above this line. So what we have to do, if we go by what we've been doing before, so we already hit the bottom of this one, let's move this one to something even. As long as we don't change the X position, it doesn't hurt anything. So let's just, just to make it easier on our calculations. So change your Y position to 2 up here. And so now we got to figure out how to get this line a tenth of an inch, 0.100 above this one, above this line, by a tenth of an inch. So the problem that we have, if we highlight this one and change it to 2.1, which is already there, uh, it's it's not really right because it's including the bottom of this is counting off these circles. So what we have to do is we have to uh, deduct the radius of this circle. So our circle is 0 0.0625. So we go 0 0.0625 divided by 2. So it's 0 0.03125. So we need this to be at 2.1 minus half of this circle. So we just take 2.1 minus 0.03125 and takes us to, so let's highlight this one again. We want this to be at 2.06875 and then hit enter. We come back here and go to the center. go down and we're at a tenth of an inch. So now we got that all lined up. So that's basically, I'll show you, I'll go ahead and finish this out real quick. This is just bonus material, I guess, to show you what I ended up doing to, to finish this out. So now that I've got that done, all I really need to do, all my circles, let's go ahead and do this. Let's group this together. Group, and we'll change it to a different color again. And we'll just arrow up. Let's I tell you what, let's just use our method of what we've been doing here. Arrow back down, get it out of the way. So this one is at point six point one two four. 
So let's just change this one to change our X position on that one, and that'll line those two up perfectly. 6.124. So now if you look at our holes, you can't see the difference. The holes are lined up perfectly. Okay, so let's edit and undo that. And let's drop this thing back down, which is clear from the other one. And I'll go ahead and just show you real quick how I get rid of those holes. So right now, we need to eliminate these holes up here. But to do that, we got to ungroup it. So I think the whole thing is grouped right now. So highlight this, ungroup. And I believe these are still going to be grouped. Yeah, see, this is still ungrouped. So now ungroup that, your line with the dots. So now we should just be able to hit one thing. Yeah. So at this point, I don't need this line anymore. This line was just a setup line. So I'm going to delete the line. And now all I have to do is come in here, highlight these circles, and delete them. I can go ahead and come up here and delete that line. I've got to ungroup these two. So now I have my two with the holes that will match up. So let's go ahead and group all these together again. So right click group, right click group. Oh, I got to hit the high. I got to hit the whole thing. I'm not going to get all the dots. Group. And that was at 6.124. Oh, what did I do there? Edit undo. I didn't mean to rotate that. Change our Y position to 6.124. And we've got our tall pouch and our second pouch. And so when I cut those out on the laser, my lace holes will line up perfect. And this is a second spot to put a second card into. Well, anyway, I know that was a lot of work. Hopefully you stuck with me through the whole thing. Uh, hopefully you can find uh, ways to apply this for what you're making or trying to create in Lightburn. But this XY position is very valuable when you're trying to create something and get everything to line up perfect. It's not Adobe Illustrator, but it's a good program. I've gotten where I used to design some stuff in Illustrator and then move it over into this program. And I have pretty much quit doing that now. I'm designing almost everything exclusively in here. So anyway, I sure do appreciate you watching. If you got any questions or anything you'd like me to go over in the Lightburn program, I'll if I know how to do it good enough that I can teach you, I'll sure make a video on it. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share my videos. Thank you.